Let's smoke some Australian Bonito. Firstly though, I just wanted to answer some of the questions I've been getting about finding and shooting these Australian Bonito or Cider Australis. And before all you Americans start coming for me telling me these fish are trash, I'm telling you they're not. They're super tasty. Cider Australis are actually more closely related to a mackerel than a tuna, despite what they may look like. All these fish are part of the Scombridae family, I believe that's how you say it. It is the mackerel and tuna family. They're all very closely related, but our bonito are more of a mackerel. Usually in winter, we don't see many of these fish, but the last winter just gone for whatever reason, they seem to have stuck around. And you can put that down to changing water currents, changing water temperatures. We've also had a couple of seasons of non-stop rain, which has changed all sorts of things for so many different species. Could be for any of these reasons that we've seen them all winter, but what it has been is foreshadowing the summer we have just entered. These last few months have been non-stop absolute plagues of Bonito on the New South Wales East Coast. At the moment, it is quite difficult to actually get a dive in without seeing these fish. However, if you are struggling, I'd first suggest considering where you're diving. I like to find these fish off ledges on headlands, usually starting around eight meters of water. You can find them shallower, but it's just not quite as common. So from about eight meters in the wash, you're gonna find them chasing bait around, cruising up and down ledges, going back and forth. Your best bet is to find a big school of bait fish, sit in that and wait for any fish in the area to come past. It's also a great way to find tons of other good species we get this time of year that are hunting around these bait schools. I don't always bring a flasher like this out with me, but this time of year, you'd be silly not to. All the faff of carrying it around to the water, getting it out, unspooling it, spooling it up, spooling it in, everything else. It's all worth it for the fish that will come in and you will shoot off it. This flasher is just a goon bag if you're Australian. If you're not Australian and you don't know what it is, it's one of these boxed wine or maybe a water bag or something else that you might call it. Basically you take that, you cut it into strips, tie it around a weight and then you put it on a line. Just something reflective, something flashy that the fish like. It's going to bring anything cruising around in the area in closer to you. Another bit of kit that I've been seeing used more and more lately is this thing, a throw flusher. Super simple. PVC tube. Nothing fancy going on there. A bit of reflective tape around it. Even lure tape, if you can find some of that online, is really good. And you throw these, and then they sink slowly, mimicking a dead fish floating down to the bottom. Tons of different species can't resist these things. I've had kingfish try and eat them. I've had bonito, not much bigger than this, try and eat them. So useful and worth their weight in gold. This little pipe alone has probably got me weeks worth of food, so they are super valuable. Just make sure you're collecting them when you throw them. We don't want any extra litter in the ocean. This time of year, I don't mind stocking up on these fish. They have a pretty impressive growth rate, reaching around 30 centimeters, even just in the first year of their life. And pretty soon after this, they actually reach sexual maturity as well, so they're breeding already. Super sustainable fish, and when they're in the numbers like we've seen lately, I really don't feel bad taking a few home to stock up the fridge. Some people are going to tell you you can't freeze these fish. However, I have had some success. You just cut the bloodlines off and make sure you vac pack them real tight. If you're looking for a good vacuum sealer, I've got a few links down in the description below. See how you go with this and experiment for yourself. If you're after other ways to extend the life of your fish, you can try things like pickling as well. I've got a video on that. And I've also got some info on my Instagram all about that as well. If you're going to freeze your fish, you probably want to cook it at the other end. I find the sashimi is just never really as good with any fish gone through a residential freezer. Even cooked bonito is beautiful. Just make sure you don't overcook it. It will become quite dry. I really enjoy things like burgers, euros, or even fish balls in a fish ball soup. And you can check out all of those things on my Instagram as well. With all of that out of the way, I hope I answered some of the questions that you guys have had about finding and shooting bonito. If you're still struggling to find any, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you've got. Let's get stuck into some clips of all this bonito action from the last few months.
Let's smoke our bonito and make this beautiful breakfast of ricotta on toast with our smoked fish on top. Bonito have incredibly small and fiddly bones, so often I like to just run my knife along the spine like this, slicing the whole fillet off the side of the fish, and then slicing through the head as well. Doing this, you end up with a really clean cut of half the fish. That looks really good for presentation as well. Doing exactly the same for the other side here, I'm just gonna angle my knife down when I reach the head to separate the spine from this half of the fish. As always, I'm using the Victorinox six inch curved boning knife with a stiff blade. In my opinion, the best filleting knife you can use. And if you're interested in getting a hold of one, I've got a link down in the description below. You can see here why I love this knife so much. That short blade gives you tons of control over the tip and we're going to insert it just below the ribs, cutting up towards the pin bones to separate them from the rib bones. Slice back down towards the belly and remove those ribs. This step is essential if you're looking for a good feed later on. Bonito, like a lot of other fish, have real sharp pin bones, and they're going to ruin your eating experience later on unless you remove them. Relatively inexpensive, these fish tweezers are an essential bit of kit when breaking down fish. And of course, for these and all the other equipment I use in the kitchen, there's links in the description down below. Now, there's a million and one ways you can brine your fish before smoking. You can wet brine, you can dry brine. Nice. You can add all sorts of different herbs and spices and flavors. But today I'm gonna to be using equal parts molasses and water, and then adding to that a little sprinkle of salt and also some brown sugar. Let's give that a mix. Now I'm gonna place our fillets into a nice tray or dish. And let's give these fillets a generous salting before they get any of this brine. Let's pour our brine in and make sure that both of these fillets are covered, allowing for maximum absorption of all of these flavors. While these fillets sit in the fridge, I am just gonna flip them over just so that meat is totally making contact with our brine. And now we'll put our fish in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. Let's take our fish out of the dish that they were in and place them onto a wire rack over a tray. We're going to put them back into the fridge for a couple of hours because we want to form what's called a pellicle on this meat now. A pellicle is basically a dry, tacky kind of film that forms on the outside of the proteins and it helps to lock in any moisture in our fish. And it also gives the smoke something to adhere to and take on all that beautiful flavor. Now this might look pretty rough and pretty basic, but if you've seen any of my other videos, you would have seen me do this before as well. I'm gonna use a cordless planer and add a shopping bag to the extraction port on it. We're gonna use it to shave down some of this beautiful Australian hardwood and get some wood chips to use in the smoker a little later. These little wood shavings it makes are perfect for the stainless steel smoke box I've got that we'll put on the coals later on. If you've been following along for a little while now, you might remember from some previous videos that I've had trouble holding temperature with the coals in this barbecue. Now I had a theory that the wider spacings on the metal grate that comes standard was allowing small little coals to drop through and therefore we were losing a lot of our heat mass. I cut off a piece of this small metal mesh that I had in the garage and I dropped that in because I just wanted to experiment to see if we could hold better temperatures. With those coals all built up, let's light them up and I'm still using this dodgy as torch. I should really get a new one, but for now it's doing the job. Another bit of kit I've been loving lately to get these coals all started up is my 18 volt electric blower. This thing absolutely pumps and gets tons of oxygen in there to help get these coals all started. Turns what can be sometimes a 30 to 40 minute job into just a couple of minutes. We've got our little stainless smoke box here and it does come with a lid, but I don't really bother using it to be honest. We're gonna load it up with our wood chips that we got from the planer before. And then let's drop that into the barbecue, sitting it on top of the coals. Once that box has started to heat up and begun to smoke a little bit, let's take the lid off and put our fish in. I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes where we'll rotate the fish so that everything's getting evenly heated. Now I managed to hold the temperature at about 100 degrees for pretty much this entire cook without having to give the fire any more air or anything like that. So I think that mesh really did the job. 
When 20 minutes is done, I'm just going to open up the barbecue here and add in some fresh wood chips. It is the only thing about using these smoke boxes is you will have to top them up as you go as things start to burn down. While we're here, we'll also spin the fish around just so everything's getting evenly heated. Another 20 minutes and then we'll come check on it. Once that 20 minutes is up, we've got our beautiful fish here. Plenty of color on that. Plenty of smoke flavor infused into that meat. I'm just going to bring it inside and let it cool down for a little while. And then let's put it in the fridge, ready for breakfast tomorrow. Any amazing brekkie wouldn't be complete without a pot of good coffee. So I'm going to throw some on to brew while we make our breakfast. We'll start out making some toast and I'm going to take some Turkish loaf here and then cut it in half. I'm going to drizzle some olive oil on that and a sprinkle of salt. Then let's chuck it under the grill and get it nice and crispy. Let's get a pot of water boiling and then I'm going to throw some eggs in. I'm only going to use two for this breakfast, but I like to cook three just in case one of them cracks. I find sometimes putting the eggs into boiling water, they kind of crack. But if you turn the heat down and bring it back from a hard boil, this seems to happen a lot less. Now the magic timing for eggs seems to be between six and seven minutes. For these extra large eggs, I'm going to do six and a half minutes. With the coffee all brewed up, I'm going to pour myself a nice cup of that. And then let's get our toast out. Let's spread some ricotta all over our toast. Then, scraping some of that smoked bonito, let's pick that up and throw that on top as well. Just as a little extra sweet treat, I'm going to add some honey on top of the fish. And let's take our eggs out, and the key to getting a good egg is chilling that egg down as soon as it comes out of the hot boiling water. Let's get them all peeled up and then slice it in half. Chuck them on top of your toast and then let's add a sprinkle of salt and pepper. And there we have it, the powerful smoked bonito ricotta toast brekkie. 